Hello everybody, this is Bluestone. Welcome back to the Pyramid Labyrinth. Today I want to show you guys something that I used in, in one of these, in this trap here. So, <laughs> just as you might expect when you press the button, the floor falls out from beneath you and then some doors open. But what I, what I want to show you in this video is the timing mechanism. It's, I think it's more interesting, so I'll show this to you guys. This will be released in a later video, don't worry. <laughs> but what I find more interesting about how I, uh, how I came up with this is normally when someone wants to make a, um, a timing circuit, they hook up a bunch of uh, comparators to each other, make a decay clock counter or a hopper clock, just w or a hopper timer, whatever you want to make. They're all they all use redstone, but I was like, you know what? Why couldn't I make a command block one? So in this case here, I had a an, R, uh, an SR latch here with a long timer that eventually resets and fills the entire floor uh, back with sand, so you can activate it again. <laughs> and you can trap someone else to fall into the lava. But this timing circuit, <laughs> yes, ignore the trap, this timing circuit is much more interesting, I think, so I'll, I'll show this to you guys. What it is, it's an armor stand, invisible armor stand, and it, he has no gravity as well, but that doesn't really matter for this scenario. Um, he is teleporting tiny fragments of a block until he reaches this one, and then once he reaches it, that stone is transformed into redstone, res a redstone block, and then this, this uh, turns the... It pushes the piston back, and I can actually simulate that here. Yep, and then it re puts the armor stand all the way back in this position to start, or to evade, or so that it can start the timer all over again. But how? Wait, what? How does this work? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. So l let's show uh, how, uh, how this works. So it's a command block based model. So I'll first need a command block, of course. I'll put an SR latch at the beginning of this with a button to activate it because that's how I've set set up the one downstairs with the. I don't even know what you call it. The trap. Let's call it the trap. So we have redstone, uh, a redstone SR latch, which is an uh, in, uh, initialism for start and reset, I believe. So when you press the button, it activates. Ah, uh, it's activated the redstone, and any more start sequences doesn't change the outcome at all. It's always already activated until the reset button is pressed, and then it start, uh, and then it's able to be activated again. That's the design I've used, and that's what I'll show in this video. So here, let's place an armor stand. So I'll do I'll get the coordinates first. So let's do set block, and then instead of uh, doing a set block, we'll do slash summon an armor stand right at those coordinates, with a tag of I don't know what what should we do it? Let's do it. Damn it! Boom! And then we have an armor stand there. Hooray! With a tag day. So if we do if we do slash say, oops, that's day, slash say at e tag equals dalet. Boom! We got an armor stand right there. So what, what we want to happen is this armor stand to move micro fragments in any direction until it hits a certain block. So let's say eh, that block there. And then we'll have that, uh, we'll transform that piston into a redstone block and, and reset, the, reset the whole device. So when the device hasn't been activated, we want this armor stand to just sit here and not do anything. Really, that's not too hard. You just leave it there. But the movement phase is more interesting. So when the redstone block move, move, moves into this position, we want to execute as the armor stand that has the tag dalet. Nothing else in this world has the tag dalet, so we don't have to worry about accidentally selecting someone else. But of course, y if you want to be more specific in your um, selector, you can do that, absolutely. So we're going to execute as that armor stand at the, at his position. We're going to say uh, run TP, and we're going to teleport him in the negative x direction here. So let's do negative, uh, let's do 0.5. So every single tick, because command blocks run every single, let's put this on repeat so it actually runs every single tick. Every single tick, every 20th of a second, this armor stand will be teleported 0.5 blocks in the negative x direction. Brilliant. But that's all that's going to do is make him fly off into oblivion. So we don't want that. What we want to happen is right when this armor stand gets to this block, we want, it to, we want to set that block to a redstone block. So once again, we're going to say slash execute at that armor stand's position, which has the tag delet. Dalit, whatever. Run, set block, right here, a redstone block. Boom, and we're done. All we gotta do is bring that armor stand back, and oh dear, that is not even close to what we want. The reason is because we didn't specify what blocks to replace. The set block command, as I used in this one, does not have, um, as far as I know anyway, does not have an option to say, okay, only replace this specific block, just like slash fill does. Replace in a set block command only says, okay, replace the block no matter what it is. Even if the block's already there, replace it. What we want to do is say fill. 
So we're gonna say fill here, 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 here. We don't have to select two coordinates that could be identical, AKA tilde, tilde, tilde. And we're gonna say fill it with redstone block, ah, redstone block, but only replace, uh, let's say stone, and we'll put stone there for a moment here. Yeah, there we go. Boop. And now, when we have that armor stand there, he will only replace that, that stone block with redstone block. Brilliant. But as you may have noticed, that armor stand continued to go off. Obviously, we don't want that. We want this thing to be able to reset and be able to reuse multiple times. So once, once this redstone block is activated, we want to do a couple other things. So once the redstone block's there, we want to say, all right, execute uh, as that armor stand, tag you as Dalit. And as we want to run, teleport back to the X coordinate because we're on the X axis here, you can see that. X, X coordinate of, looking at blocks, 82. All right, we're gonna teleport back to, it doesn't matter what the Y and Z are, we're gonna stay the same, 82. Okay, so now, anytime we have an armor stand in the world that's moved out and away, oh no, we want this armor, oh, actually it already activated. <laughs> I was just gonna demo it for you guys. But if you have the armor stand there, and he's running off into oblivion, oh no, we want it to come back, boop, this, arm, this command block here tells him to teleport to the X coordinate of 82. Boom, got it. And now, any time that our armor stand activates this redstone block, it will be teleported back to x equals 82. But along with that, once th once the uh, redstone block is activated, we want to set it back to stone. So we'll look at the look at the redstone block. Do slash set block. Tab tab tab. Stone. Take that command. Put it in the command block here. And now, once this circuit is activated and the armor stand uh, places the redstone block there, it moves the redstone block back over to be activated again. And play. Oh well, <laughs> it does have some extra timing on it. And it, and it puts the armor stand back into its place, like so. Now you may have noticed this button <laughs> stopped it from resetting. When this piston has head is extended, the, it can't reset. The piston can't push it back. So, uh, hyp or what you'd want to do is put a monostable on it. So we'll push push this button back here. Boop. Must do the sound effects. Make sure you do the sound effects, or else this won't work. And then put a repeater here with a block on top. And now, it only receives a one tick pulse, and it resets perfectly. Beautiful. Now I'm going to bring the signal over here so, you can, so we can see this more. Activation. The redstone block will be, pushed, be, will be pushed over. The armor stand will teleport across, set, uh, set the stone block back to redstone, and reset the entire mechanism. Like so. That is the counting timer. Now, you may have noticed or <laughs> thought to yourself, yes, and, and it is true, you can extend this timer by reducing the amount of, or uh, the distance that this armor stand teleports. So for example, if I change this to point one, it will last, what is that? Uh, five times shorter or sh five times longer because the armor stand is only moving point one blocks at per, per 20th of a second rather than point five blocks. And the one I used in the uh, in the actual trap was eh, something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was something similar to that. So as long as this redstone block is here, as long as it needs to be reset, it will start pushing this armor stand. Come on, come on, reset! And then once the red, once the armor stand hits the stone block, it'll reset, teleport the armor stand back in place, reset the stone block, and allow the player to activate it once again. This is a long timer that can be customized for many different things. Of course, you don't have to put the stone block three blocks away. You can put it right next to it and say, okay, only teleport a thousandth of a block at a time. But it's really cu it's incredibly customizable, and that's what I like about this design, and that's why I've used it many times in this pyramid here. But other than that, this has been Bluestone. Uh, this is a cool little timer. Feel free to use it anywhere you like, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.